Does that look familiar? I hope that looks familiar to you. My back looks familiar. <laughs> Does this look familiar to you? Yeah. That, look, that should look familiar to you. You just did that in section 4.7. What is this formula right now? Oh, good. You all remember the formula. That's fantastic. That's awesome. It's either a permutation or a combination. It's one of the other. It's really similar to the combination one. It is the combination one. That's, oh, you know what? Uh, in fact, let me make that an X, and then it is the combination one. I think I, I accidentally put it in R. It should be an X. Uh, oh, yeah, now it makes a whole lot more sense. So, now that did look familiar to you, did it? <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen that. Before. Yeah, this is now the, the combination formula. This is. This would be NCX. That's what this is. That's what this, this section is. It's a number of combinations of ways that we can accomplish eight successes or however many successes out of ten trials. That many, many combinations is what we're looking for. Uh, so we're taking each of those combinations. We're not done with the formula, though. What we do now is multiply all those successes times the probability of success for each one. That means to the x power. So x right here is the number of successes we're looking for. We identify this as the probability of x, that's the number of successes. This is every time we have a success, we have to multiply that probability. That's what the p to the x comes from. Now, we also have to multiply every failure times the probability of failure, because we're looking for an exact number here. So this is kind of interesting to think about. We're, in our situation, we actually want eight successes, and we actually want how many failures? We want two failures. We want two failures in order to get those eight successes. Are you with me on that? So in our case, we have to multiply not only by the probability of success a certain number of times, we also want the probability of failure a certain number of times. What does this have to be, do you think? If we have x successes, we want how many failures? In, in this case, two failures, sure. But how about in variable form? N minus two. Say that again? N minus two. N minus two for this situation, sure. That would be 10 minus two. I don't have a two here. I have a, I'm sorry, not N minus two. We'd have N minus eight, actually. That would give me the number of failures. Yeah, N minus eight. N minus what? X. X. That's right. If you have X successes and you have N total trials, how many failures do you have? Well, you have the total number of trials minus the number of successes. That gives you your failures. If you have eight successes out of 10 trials, we want two or 10 minus eight failures. You with me on this, folks? Y yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So this is the number of combinations that we can accomplish X successes. This is the combinations of that happening, uh, where where you have different, like a different scenario playing out on rolling your die. Because you're not just going to take your die and roll. Uh, let's see, what are we doing? Fours, a four, a four, a four, a four, eight times, and then whatever else the, the next two. We can roll a four and then a two and then a four, a four, a four, and then a seven. Or no, not a seven. We can't roll seven, can we? <laughs> a six and then a couple more fours. We could do that. Or we could roll a four and then a three and then some other ones. Or a four and then a five and some other ones. We could do all those situations. All those play into the number of ways we can get eight fours and two something else's. Yes? Two something else, whatever they are. We don't care. They're on the same category of failing. We take each of those successes, we multiply that times the probability of P, or the probability of those successes. That's where this P to the X is coming from. This is over and over again. If we had eight successes, we'd be doing probability of success eight times. That's where we're getting the exponent. Probability of failure, we're taking, well, the total number of trials minus that many successes gives us the number of failures. We want two failures, we multiply this twice times itself, probability of failing twice. That's where this formula is coming from. Now let's see if we can use this formula to find this probability. So we want the probability Oh, by the way, if you want to make this a little more concise, I'll let you. Why don't, instead of doing all this work, because your calculator will actually do that, won't it? Let's just call it that. Let's do ncx times p of x times q n minus x. 
that's a little bit easier to accomplish on your calculator. We know how to do this. That's just an exponent. That's just an exponent. I'm going to do that over there so we, we can see it a little bit better. Right now, we're going to look for the probability of eight successes. The probability of eight successes. What this says to do is, first off, we're going to have n c x. What was our n in this case? Yo, you also okay on that, right? That we have ten. Okay, let's do this. We got ten c. What was the x? Eight successes. If x is ncx, in our case we have 10 trials, we're looking for 8, exactly 8 successes times. We're going to take the probability of each of those successes to the power, which happens to also be the number of successes. So what's our lowercase letter p? What would go right here? I'm going to put that in parentheses, but it's a little bit more nice that way, so you know that's a decimal in there, 0 0.30. What power is that going to be raised to, ladies and gentlemen? Eight. Sure, sure. Why to the eighth power again? That's our number of successes. I want you to think about what we're doing. Think about what you're doing. This is the probability of each success. We're multiplying the probability of each success times itself for however many successes we want. So 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.3, eight times. That's where that eight's coming from. We want eight successes, multiply the probability of success times itself eight times. That's 0 0.30 to the eighth power in this particular case. Next up, we take the probability of failing. What's that probability? 0.70. And we're going to take that to what power in this case? 10 minus 8. Yeah, 10 minus 8, which is going to give us that 2. So n was 10 x was 8. So our probability is 10c8 times 0 0.30 to the 8th power times 0 0.70 to the 2nd power. That will give us a probability of getting exactly exactly 8 successes. Again, the reason why this formula works, this is every possible way you could get 8 successes out of 10 rules. That's what that says. This is the probability of success. We want eight of them. This is the probability of failure. We want two of them. You multiply all those probabilities together, multiplication rule, and you have this formula. So based kind of on the multiplication rule, how this is derived. Let's do it. Find 10 C8 for me. You should know how to do that on your calculator. We've done that a couple times right before. What is it? Only 45. So there's 45 ways rolling a die that I could roll it 10 times and get exactly eight fours. So 45. Oh, by the way, I was going to mention this. Look at the board here real quick. The number four was the four was the number we're actually trying to roll, wasn't it? Did you use the number four at all? That's what I'm trying to tell you, is that this is not based on the specific value that you're trying to get. What it's based on is the number of successes you're looking at, considering your probabilities. Do you see the difference there? Four doesn't even play into our equation at all. It's just about the number of successes compared to the probability of each success, probability of each failure, the number of trials you have, and the number of successes you're looking for. It doesn't even have to do with the four. It's all about the number of successes. Yes, no? That's what I was trying to say earlier, or what I was saying earlier. So 45, that's this little part, times, let's do 0 0.30 to the eighth power, 6.56. Oh, okay, times 10 to the negative 5, right, because when you multiply a decimal times a decimal, you actually get a smaller decimal. So it can't be, so you put 6.56, you're way off. Okay, you're way, way off. You're going to get a number bigger than 1, you're going to have a probability of like, oh, I don't know, 250 or something. That your probability has to be between 0 and 1. So when you're reading your calculator and you get times 10 to the negative 5th, you have to know what to do with that. So tell me exactly what you got. 6.56, is that what it says in your calculator? 6.56. Okay, 6.561 times 10 to the negative 
Do you know what that means? Yes. That means you are one, two, three, four, five decimal places this way. That's what that means. So you do not put 6.561. You put 0. .00006561. Should you round these numbers, do you think? Man, they're so small. If you round them, you're going to be off. All right? You're going to be pretty off on that. So we can't round them. We're going to put exactly what our calculator says to the end, to the very end. <laughs> and we're going to do the same thing, 0. .70 squared. That should give you 0. .49. So 45 times 0 .00006561 times 0 .49. Okay. Say that one more time. Seven. It's probably six 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 forever. Zero 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 one. I'm wrong. I mean, it's probably goes zero one. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's that's good enough for us. In fact, most of the time we're going to end right about here. Most of the time we're end right about there. But to get right about here or here or here, you have to be very accurate with your numbers. You cannot round those things. Remember the rounding I told you about? Don't round till the very last step. That's what we're doing here. So what does that even mean? Oh my! If you roll a die ten times, what is the probability that you are going to get exactly eight? Number fours using this information. Is it big? It's like 0.1 percent, 0.14 percent. That's pretty rare, right? Pretty, pretty rare that you're going to roll that die ten times and get eight fours, and then two of something else's. That's pretty rare. By the way, what distinguishes rare from unrare or usual versus unusual? What what number are we looking for probability speaking wise? 0 0.05, not 0.5, that'd be 50%. Okay, 0 0.05, that's 5%. If this is less than 5%, which it definitely is, then this is considered an unusual event, and this is very, very unusual. Very, very unusual there. Now let's consider after we did this, how about the next question? The next question is, what's the probability of rolling at most eight fours? In this class, you're going to have to be very good at knowing the interplay between at most, at least, more than, uh, or less than, and none. Those four situations occur a lot. More than, less than, at most, at least, and none. none none's the easy one, none being zero. Okay, but the, the at, at most and at least and more than and less than are, are all different situations. What about finding the probability using the same information of rolling at most eight fours? Probability of rolling at most eight fours. Oh, let's think about it. Probability of rolling at most eight fours. I mean, we're going to pick up our die and we're going to roll it. We're still going to roll it ten times. Okay, same exact information up here. 